I sort of suspect if you go to anyone mm. and say, would you like a nuclear reactor next door, you're probably not going to get a great deal of support at the time, but, but broadly, Australians are supportive of nuclear energy <laughs> That's the whole Absolutely. problem. Absolutely. But the thing is as well that a lot of these communities are being spoken to are also about to get a whole lot of transmission lines and solar farms right. and wind turbines that they don't mm. want either. And it's whether or not they're going to get firmed energy that's affordable and reliable. And again, we've had this ridiculous ban on nuclear energy even being able to be discussed for decades. Right, yeah. So we've got a lot of people who don't understand how the technology's evolved. They all think it's Chernobyl-style big reactors, which it's mm. not. They don't understand how it would work. And you've... I mean, the thing is, let's get Steve Combe selling it because, you know, the ex-ALP uh, minister out there acknowledging... Right, yeah. The renewables, hundreds of billions of dollars. So there goes Bowen's argument about the cost of renewables because Combe himself has now blown that out of the water and Combe's also said the jobs aren't going to be there that are constantly being promised by this Labor government. Yeah. And anyone who's anyone in those areas that, that are based on coal, <clears throat> based on coal-fired power, they know their jobs aren't going to be there when they allow everything to be knocked down and a couple of solar panels or wind turbines to be put up. Correct. And you, you said before, Joe, that that is the yeah. problem, that, that it, you're trying to convince people that they should have a, a nuclear reactor next door. But how hard is it? There'll be money will come along with it, whatever, to sweep yeah, the whole yeah, deal up. Yeah. But, you know, people are living, and, of course, it's not a, a power reactor, it's a medical nuclear reactor, but people have been living next to a nuclear reactor in Lucas yeah. Heights oh, since the I... 1950s. So, yeah. surely, it's... I, I don't think this spells the end of of uh, the coalition's nuclear dream, I think it's just saying, well, you've, you've probably just got to sell it a bit better to some people because people have been living next to nuclear reactors for years. Yeah, well, look, I did, I've, I've been writing about this for ages. I wrote exactly... I predicted exactly this outcome just a couple of weeks ago. I'm all in for, favour of lifting the moratorium. I'm all in favour of having the debate. If we can get, you know, cost-effective uh, large-scale nuclear reactors to replace the the coal-fired generators, great. If we can get small modular re reactors online that can be hooked up to smelters or high-energy users, that's fine by me. But again, watching, you know, watching even this, the New South Wales government failing to meet its own housing targets because a residents' action group pops up every time they try to build something <laughs> six storeys high, yeah. just imagine what that is going to be like. Well, the Teals didn't want a battery exactly. in their that's, own seats. That's, 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 They're the climate change. We're all for renewables, but don't put the battery in Waverley or North Sydney. Well, I, I mean, in the inner west where, where I live, I live in the, the Leichhardt area, we've got all these signs up saying it's a nuclear-free zone. That's right. I was so worried that they were going to build a nuclear reactor on top of my well, house. I think they're more field. worried about nuclear submarines sailing up the Cook River. Right. <laughs> they, they should be more worried about the asbestos but, but in their park makes, now. This is what makes it insane, you know, because you've got Peter Malinowskis, again, bastion, voice of reason, amazing guy, who's saying, this is ridiculous, we're going to have nuclear submarine maintenance facilities yeah. in South yeah. Australia that we're working on where we can do everything except the stuff that actually makes them go. Mm. Yeah. Yes. And so, so and because of this moratorium, you can't even but, fix but our own Mally, nuclear submarine. Mally got in trouble when he talked about that and yeah. then changed his tune very quickly. Yeah, but at least I, he's I out there. Is, yeah. At least he's out He there. may have I mean, lost his Christmas invite the to the Lodge with Aldo now. The Australian Workers' now. Union also supports at least examining nuclear mm. power yeah. because they know that. And like you said, Greg Combe and Jenny George, yeah. I think, have started to raise... I think I said Stephen. And what is it? What is it? If Stephen Conroy and Greg Combe move... Seriously, I love you, Stephen Conroy. What's indefensible on. is the moratorium. That's indefensible. Correct. It just needs and to all, all that Dutton needs, needs to say is it's nuclear science. Banning any branch of science yes. is nuts. Mm -hmm. yes. If you're going to be intelligent and have an intelligent country, you can't ban any, any level of science. You've got to allow our universities to research it. You've got to allow people to think about it and talk about it. And if the market approves it and we, we find the safety things are OK... But, but banning the science, it came out of um, a trade-off. John Howard Correct. did with the Greens yep. years yep. ago. Yep. And, and he thought, it won't matter. We don't need this. We've got all this cheap coal. We've Therefore, coal. I'll yeah. sign off on the, mm. on the Greens thing in order to get their, their agreement and with this. And little did he know. It's, it's left us stuck with a moratorium on a branch of science. I know. Can anyone <laughs> understand how stupid that is? Yeah. Mm. Here's a branch. Of, in, in future, we're banning geology. 
there will be no geology taught hey, at any, any Australian right. universities. Mm. It's bad, you know, it's bad science, really dangerous science. Mm. That's right. stupid. Well, let's face it, we've basically banned biology at this stage. <laughs> <laughs> and Charlotte, very quick. Well, I just think that um, it, what I found fascinating was a couple of months ago that new political party launched that was called Gen Z. Oh, uh, I don't yeah. know if you guys remember that. A now, sham, but anyway. Uh, yes, mm. but the most interesting thing I thought in it was one of their policies is pro-nuclear. Mm. And I do think that younger people are going to be more pro-nuclear mm. than the mm. current generation. Generations, and that's because we had that anti-nuclear um, yes. sentiment in the 70s and the 80s. Mm -hmm. The younger generations, they won't have that stigma around it. And yep. Oliver Stone did a fantastic documentary called Nuclear Now, where he basically argued that it's a perception versus reality conundrum. Yes. And he was saying, look, the threat of climate change is far more dangerous than the threat of nuclear. So, you know, that has to be weighed up. Yeah, and I, I think the, the, polling, the polling has mm. showed the interest from young people as well. At least my generation is doing something good, I suppose. <laughs>